Stacey Mobley, thank you for your patience. We're going to bring you in so that this way you can introduce yourself in a minute. Um, just so you know, we are simul streaming not only on Clubhouse, on Facebook, but as well on um, Cross the Line Radio on YouTube as well. All right. Dom, Joel, y'all, what's up? Shalom, y'all, what's happening? Hey, Shalom. 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 I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute on my mixer, and I think Corey's back. Hopefully, he's out the matrix. Yeah, I'm back. Can I be heard? You can be heard. All right, good deal. Um, yeah, so um, just to pick up where I was, I'm not sure what was covered, um, why I wasn't uh, in, but um, I was just talking about the Versus platform and people standing opposite and being able to build on the, uh, you know, on the topic at hand, whatever that is within the scripture. So I want to get straight to it. I'm not sure how much time we want to take. Um, Katas out before we get straight to it. Are you kind of set on the technical end on YouTube? We, we could uh, we could get straight to it. Um, I'm completely set. I'm going to unmute the brother this way. He'd be able to introduce himself, and then uh, you could take it away from there. Beautiful. Dr. Stacy Mobley, you are unmuted, and uh, Corey, you got it from here. All right, good deal. So um, first and foremost, we want to talk about the the rules just simply of the platform um, that we kind of watch and monitor when we moderate uh, those rules. Um, the first one would be biblical integrity. Um, you want to try your best not to quote. I know the set formal debate, so it's time restraints, um, but we try to stick to those rules. So the first rule will be biblical integrity. Do not quote or make reference to the Bible without citing book, chapter, verse. The reason being is because of course it's being recorded for the world to continue to, uh, look at and learn from, but also there's a lot of live people that's following you. They're trying to look at the accounts of the things that you're speaking of so we can be able to kind of further analyze that. So you want to be able to analyze that um, uh, and present that information. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, we may get to that hot seat round, the Q&A area to where uh, there will be a back and forth. Um, so the second rule would apply as well, which um, stems from 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 and Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 7 and 8, where both verses sums up and say, do everything decently in order and do not interrupt men in the midst of their speech. So it's a pretty much a long winded way of saying one mic um, and that's it. So I just want to make sure that I actually say that um, just allow each other to um, have the conversation. Now, that should be an issue in round one and round two, but it may be an issue in round three when you guys are actually having a conversation as a collective. So uh, do both brothers understand that or uh, have any points to add or take away? Absolutely. All clear to me. All right, beautiful, beautiful. And then uh, let's actually get to the... Uh, the set structure of the debate and let me know if I, um, I don't come off clear enough if you guys can just interject the, and ask many points so we can uh, be on point on our end so it doesn't seem unfair to you Katsuza, or unfair to you Dr. Stacy Mobley so um, from my understanding this will be an 88 minute debate an 88 minute debate I will break down the times like this round one would be 10 minutes for each brother to be able to build their premise. 10 minutes for each brother. That would sit us at 20 minutes. Round two would be 10 minutes for each brother to not only rebuttal, but they can further build their premise. They can take the opportunity to do either or. Further build your premise or rebuttal. But round two is also 10 minutes. That will put us at 40 minutes. Round three is a Q&A. You're actually putting the opposite brother on the hot seat. So it's a Q&A. That'll be 20 minutes a piece. 20 minutes a piece. One brother will go and then the other brother will go for 20 minutes. That sits us at 80 minutes. So then from there, we have eight minutes to pick up from. So we have an introduction and a conclusion. So each brother would get two minutes on the front end of the debate to actually introduce themselves, introduce their school of thought, as well as let the people know what they'll be teaching today. 
Uh, mainly we ask is that during that time, that two minute time period, you try not to use Bible verses um, to just so it's crystal clear and clean what your position is with your own words. So you'll use two minutes on the front end. Both brothers will get two minutes. That's four minutes. And then you would do the same thing on the back end. Use four more minutes to do the same thing on the back end, two minutes apiece. Um, and you'll pretty much just conclude, say your name, your school of thought. And then you will also add um, what you did demonstrate to the people today. This is not a debate platform where we're voting who win, who lost. We don't do none of that. It's just a versus platform so everybody can be edified. And then you can go back to your own respective spaces to say, you know, who, who, who you feel like took it or we'll leave it, leave it up to the people. Other than that, this is an edifying platform. We try to keep it fair down the middle when it comes to debate. So it's an 88-minute structure. Uh, does anybody got uh, any questions or any add-ons to take away? I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Sounds good. Appreciate appreciate that. All right, good deal, good deal. Um, Halab, did you want to give clarity on the timing? Um, I think you are, did you already mention that they will have two minutes to respond to every question? No, I haven't got into the, 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 the nitty gritty of each, how each round will go time wise. That's why I left the space to you do. Okay. No sweat. Yeah, you got it. All right. Good deal. So, um, so on round one, you have, it's a 10 minute structure. So what Halab will do, you'll be good on the time to uh, do the time Halab, just to make sure. All right, good deal. So on round one, uh, Halab would chime in at five minutes, and he would chime in at one minute. At five minutes, he will unmute and say five minutes left. At one minute, he will unmute and say one minute left. If you generally hear a voice while you're teaching, that's Halab telling you the time because you may be speaking at the time. So if you hear a voice, it comes in and it unmutes or it mutes back, then you know that that was a lob. So he's not going to fur if you ask him, hey, what you say? He's not going to further his position. He's not going to give clarity. He's just going to come in five minutes left and then one minute left. That's round one. He'll do the same thing on round two. Now, when it gets to round three, it's a little bit more technical, just a tad bit more. So it's a 20-minute round to where at 10 minutes, he will say 10 minutes left. And then at one minute, he will say one minute left. But when Katazai asks Dr. Stacy Mobley a question, Dr. Stacy Mobley has two minutes to answer it. He doesn't have to take the whole two minutes, but he has to answer it within at least two minutes. So Katazai can have multiple questions that he can ask within the 20 minute bill. So at the maximum, he has to only take two minutes to be able to thoroughly answer that question. He doesn't have to take all the time, but he has a two-minute maximum. So if you don't take the whole two minutes, you will never hear Halab unmute. But if you take the two minutes, then you will hear him unmute to say time for your two minutes. So it'll be more so time in terms of you answering that question. And that'll give the space for the other instructor to go ahead and ask the next question. Um, so I just want to make sure I say that also within the hot seat round, um, you when you're answering questions, you must answer questions with question. I mean, I'm sorry. You must answer questions with answers. You cannot answer questions with questions or rhetorical questions. You can't do it. You have to answer questions with answers. You can't send a question back. To that person, it has to be all answers. So I just want to make sure that I uh, I say that to you guys. Um, another thing is, if you're asked a yes or no question, you must answer yes or no. You can have the space to expound. You do can use up two minutes to expound on your yes or no, but it has to be a clean yes or a clean no. It has to be yes or no if you're asked a yes or no question. You have to say yes, but let me expound and then go into scriptures and expound. But you have to say yes or no. Um, I think we pretty much covered the gist of the main parts of the debate. Uh, does any one of the instructors have any questions? Or does any of the moderators 
have a point to add. La, I think we're good to go. Cartazar and Dr. Stacy Mobley, do y'all have anything to add? I'm good to go. All clear. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. So have you guys communicated and discussed? I'm not sure uh, who issued the challenge because usually who issued the challenge is the one who would go first on round one and round two. So that's whoever issued the challenge. Yeah, Dr. Stacy issued the challenge. All right, beautiful. So Dr. Stacy Mobley, you will go first on round one and round two. But on round three, you will put Katiza on the hot seat first. So you will be able to ask him questions first and grill into his position. Um, and then he will actually, uh, you know, after that, get the opportunity to go in on your position. So on round one, you will go first. And round two, you will also present your information first. And then on round three, you get first dibs to attack his position. Um, you good with that, Dr. Stacy? I'm good. Sounds good. Appreciate it. All right. Good deal. Um, if you're just coming into the Versus platform, let me uh, post that link before we get started so people can be able to uh, see that. One second. It was about two minutes here. Copy. Post that link. So what you guys will see on the clubhouse end is you'll actually see the link to the YouTube if you want to be able to watch it live um, from a visual perspective on YouTube. That's posted at the top of Clubhouse on the Versus platform. So you'll be able to tap that link and then you'll zap out of here and then go to, to the YouTube platform. Or you can just stay here. Um so on and so forth. Also, um, Kataza and Dr. Stacy, after the 88 minute formal debate, we usually, let's say if you guys was having an excellent build and y'all at a place to where y'all want to kind of keep going, we kind of open it up after that for just to have an open dialogue where you guys can just communicate, uh, back and forth. So I just want to, um, say, uh, you know, mention that, that you actually, uh, can communicate right after that, you know, it, just on an open dialogue type of thing. It's not formal, but you just have the space to communicate back and forth and kind of keep the debate going if you guys felt like y'all haven't fully uh, clarified any of your positions. So, uh, y'all uh, understand that before we get started here? Yeah, yeah that's fine. All right, good deal. Uh, let's see. Y'all, what's up? You're on stage. Y'all, what's up? Would you be able to, uh, like, focus on uh, any scholarship issues um, and reasons on why you may uh, stop the clock? Would you be able to focus on that area? Absolutely. I All right, good deal. I'm not sure if uh, Tazariak is here, so I'll kind of focus on uh, decorum or anything like that, any, any type of unmuting or whatever. Uh, so, Halab. Um, and would you be able to keep time for the duration of the, um, the debate? All right, beautiful. So, yeah, let's get started here, man. Uh, make sure y'all following the Versus platform. This is Dr. Stacy Mobley versus Captain Katazar, the divinity of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to go right into it. Halab, if you can set two minutes, uh, we'll give Dr. Stacy Mobley two minutes first to introduce himself to other people, his school of thought as well as what he'll be teaching us today. So, Halab, if you can set the clock for two minutes, flash your mic when it's set. Okay, good deal. So, the clock is set for two minutes. Um, Dr. Stacy Mobley, if you can, uh, just simply introduce yourself, unmute yourself, introduce yourself to the people in your school of thought, and also what you'll be demonstrating to us um, today. Usually use no Bible verses for the two minutes. The floor is yours. All right. Good evening. I'm Stacy Mobley, gospel preacher for the Church of Christ, Colorado Springs. I appreciate this opportunity to defend what the Bible teaches about Jesus of Nazareth, the God man born in Bethlehem of Judea. I am on a mission for God tonight 
and doing business for him to exalt his son to his proper place. That is his deity. Jesus is God, as I will prove tonight. But to be clear, when I say Jesus is God, I am not saying he is the Father or the Holy Spirit. They are distinct individuals. I am not a polytheist, one who believes in different gods. And we can explain that as we need to. I believe in one God. I am saying he possessed the same divine nature, the same essence, that's what God means, as the Father and the Holy Spirit. I want to be clear and as precise as I can. The word God doesn't mean one, but deity. There is, in fact, one divine nature, but three persons who possess this one divine nature. I will flesh this all out in my proofs tonight concerning Jesus. And so I'm looking forward to a healthy discussion. Thank you. Beautiful. I appreciate that, um, Doctor. So we'll go over to the introduction for Captain Katiza. Uh Mahalab, if you can reset that time to two minutes. Uh, Captain, if you can, uh, just simply introduce yourself, tell the people your school of thought and what you'll be demonstrating to us tonight. Two minutes, no Bible verses. God, shalom, Yahweh Shem, Shabrak, Thumb to all my brothers, Yahweh Shem, all Thumb, Shem, Yahweh Shem, all my sisters. I am Captain Katazai of the Israelite School of Universal and Practical Knowledge. Started at 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York, under Commanding General Yohanna. And w once again, it's, it seems as though I just want to make sure that the, the waters will not be muddied. Christ is not the Most High. Neither are both of them the same entity. You understand? This is, this, is, this is what needs to be known. And when we talk about the Most High, and when we talk about the Father, that is not Christ. Neither are, are, are they, once again, the same entity. And that's the problem. We are not Trinitarians here. You understand? These are separate entities, which will be proven tonight. That's my time. Good deal. We appreciate that, uh, Captain Katazai Halab. If you can, go ahead and set the uh, timers uh, for 10 minutes. If uh, the brothers on stage can stay on mute unless there's some type of a uh, technical issue or some type of issue on the um, scholarship end or decorum in, like, of course, on YouTube. If you guys, uh, during your build, if you can uh, mute up during when the other person is uh, building, if you can stay muted as well to make sure that the conversation comes out clean. So, Halab, if you can, flash your mic when you sit for 10 minutes. All right, good deal. So, Dr. Stacy Mobley, um, you are up first. When you start speaking, your time will start. Um, just to give everybody a little bit more clarity for the formal debate, this is Dr. Stacy Mobley versus Captain Katsaza, and the uh, topic is the divinity of Jesus Christ. Uh, the floor is yours, Dr. Stacy, to start speaking. Uh, there's no audio. He might be on mute speaking. I'm sorry. I absolutely was on mute. All right, beautiful. I was going right. to give you about. I was going to give you about thirty to forty-five seconds to. Uh, <laughs> I said I give him about forty-five seconds before he starts speaking. Okay, but, uh, I'm yeah. sorry about that. I'm not. No, muting, it's no problem. Muting and unmuting. Okay, I'm I ready. Got you. We we got you. So we got your time set at ten minutes. We didn't move until you moved. Um, so, uh, the floor is yours. This is round one, Dr. Stacy Mobley, uh, being able to demonstrate to us the divinity of Jesus Christ. The floor is yours. John chapter one, verses one through three. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. This one scripture settles this for us. Two things of importance are said here. First, the word was is very important. It is the Greek word eon, 
and in the imperfect tense. This means that the word has always been. It means continuous existence. Let me be very clear here. The Greek word was proves that the word annotated all creation, but also that he has always existed. The word was is in the imperfect tense, which indicates something is ongoing or is a mode of existence that transcends time. It indicates continued action in past time. Christ the word belongs to a realm where time does not matter. The imperfect tense emphasizes continuous existence. This proves Jesus is God. The second thing is that the verse plainly tells us the word was God. Let me say that again. It says the word was God. That is, he possesses the same divine essence or divine nature. How can you read anything else into the passage? Now, I don't want my opponent to try to rewrite scripture and say the word being God means power. That's not what the text says. It plainly tells us that the word was God. The Greek is theos, God and not dunamis, the word for power. Now, if you want to know who the word is identified as, look at John chapter 1 and verse number 14. The Bible says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So in John chapter 1, when we're talking about the Word, we're talking about Christ, because in verse number 14, the Bible teaches us that the Word became flesh. That is the incarnation. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is that? It's Jesus. This one sentence proves my position. This debate is actually settled. From this beautiful prologue in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. First Timothy 3, 16 backs everything just said. The Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Let me read it again. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. But we have more. In Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 5, and John 12, 39 through 41, what Isaiah saw. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 1, Isaiah goes into the temple the year that King Uzziah dies and see the Lord sitting upon a throne. Concerning the angels, verse 3 through 5 says, And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook, out, shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The phrase Lord of hosts in the Hebrew is Yahweh, Jehovah. Now in the book of John, chapter 12, verse 41, we read, Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Now what things did Isaiah say? The things said in verses 37 through 40. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and then hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts, and in turn, so that I should that, so that I should heal left. them. These things said, these things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Now when did Isaiah see his glory? In Isaiah chapter 6, before his coming into the world. Who did he see? Yahweh, Jehovah. Who is the context speaking about in John 12? Jesus. Therefore, when Isaiah saw Yahweh, Jehovah, he saw Jesus. 
This proves that Jesus is God. John chapter 8 and verses number 58. Now I hear from Jesus himself. The question on the floor is, do you believe what he said about himself? In his discussion with his antagonists, the Jews, he told them that Abraham was glad to see his day. They questioned his sanity by saying he was not yet 50 years old. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. The Hebrew ego emai, the, the Greek, I'm sorry, ego emai in Greek. He was declaring when he said that, I am, that he was the self-existent one. Just like God declared to Moses back in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, when he told Moses to go and tell the people, I am, have sent you. Now, what are you going to do with I am? Let me give you a little history about this name. The name I am was the greatest name for God known to the Jews and was treated with utmost reverence by them. It was known as the ineffable name. They would not speak it. It is said that when a scribe was copying the scriptures and came to this name for God, he would take a new pen just to write that name. It is said that when a reader in the synagogue came to this name in the sacred text, he would not read it. He would bow his head and worship, and the congregation, knowing he was thinking the ineffable name, would bow and worship too. And yet here in John chapter 8 and verse number 58, Jesus boldly claimed it. So much the more that the Jews, in verse number 59, took up stones to stone him. In my remaining time, let me talk about uh, Thomas. On the very day of the Lord's resurrection, he made an appearance to the disciples when Thomas was not present. The disciples told Thomas about the Lord's appearance in their midst. Thomas said, unless I see in his hand the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. That's John 20, verse 25. After eight days, the Lord again appeared to the disciples. This time, Thomas was present. The Lord said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered, my Lord and my God. The very thing Jesus forbade anyone to worship only God, only God. And yet here he is accepting worship. John, I'm sorry, Thomas calling him my God. The Greek Testament says, the Lord of me and the God of me. There is the definite article immediately preceding the word of God. And so, with respect to John 1.1, 1, 1, the word God is a reference to Jehovah. Thomas was not only declaring the deity of Christ, he called him Jehovah. This is my position tonight. One minute left. That Jesus is God. Jesus possesses the divine essence, the same divine essence, the same divine nature as the Father, as the Holy Spirit. And you cannot overcome these scriptures and these proofs by giving a wave of the, of, of the hand or by trying to rewrite scripture to do away what they plainly are teaching. Thank you. I can see my time. Appreciate that, uh, Dr. Stacey Mobley. Her live, if you can, reset. We are still in round one. Captain Cox is out. will uh, go for round one. Her live is reset on the time. He would chime in at five minutes and one minute. Round one is, is on Captain Cox's eye. The topic is the divinity of Jesus Christ. Cox's the, uh, the floor is yours. Whenever you start, the time will start. Okay, no sweat. We're going to get straight to it. So, once again, this is not our first running with Dr. Stacy Mobley, right? The, the man is a glutton for punishment. However, he does know that I was going to go to John first, which is why he made an attempt to lie and said that this word doesn't mean power because of the Greek. This is why Christians don't understand the Bible. I'm going to help you all out with something. It's because although the New Testament was written in Greek, 
You understand? The culture is of the Hebrew Israelites. So that's why when you go, and even if you looked in the Strongs, I'll use the Strongs for now. Does it say Theos? Yes, absolutely. But when you go down and it keeps going into the lexicon and it talks about what the Hebrew equivalent for this word Theos would be, it's what is ignorantly uh, 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 quoted as Elohim, which is Alahayim, which means powers, power, judge, ruler, or authority. So when you see El or Elohim, that's Allah or Alahayim, because it's just letting you know. So I'm going to translate this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with power, and the word was power. You understand? So meaning what? It was given the power by this word in order to create. Now, we're going to get there later, right? And I'm not going to make this a rebuttal round. But I just want you all to pay attention. In the very beginning, he did turn around and say, Christ, Jesus, is not the father. Then the last round, he just turned around and said that when he looked at Yahweh, he saw Jesus. Well, which one is it? We're not confused here. We're very good at listening. We're paying attention. You wanted to join them together. It's not how things work here, all right? So now I'm just going to show you, you understand, countless amounts of separations before I completely rebuttal half the other garbage that was said earlier. But John 8 and 40, but now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I had heard of God. This did not Abraham. How do he hear it of God? Is he hearing it of himself? Is he hearing voices? Is he a schizophrenic? Why do they try to turn Christ into a schizophrenic? Why do you try to take this brother who is the greatest man to walk the face of the earth and make him a sociopath? I don't understand it. John 14 and 28, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the father for my father is greater than I. I thought you said they were equal. This is written in red. I thought you said they are the one and they share the same divinity. No, Christ is going to let you know who's greater than him, who sent him. You understand? It is not the one who sent greater. It's not the one who, what, who sent you. You understand the greatest? Then who was sent? I mean, that's what he's saying out of his own mouth. Let's continue reading John 20 and 17. Jesus saith unto her, touch me not. I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. You understand the most high power. Are there other powers? Absolutely. Are there other Elohim or Allahim? Absolutely. The angels are them. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But there is one power that is above all, which clearly we're starting to see that there's a ranking system here. And Christ is below him. They cannot be equal with each other. Let's continue on. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be in all. Who is he subject to? If they're equal, why is he subjected to something? What are we talking about here? You understand? Stop trying to make Christ a schizophrenic. Stop trying to give him a mental illness. He cast out mental illness. He didn't have one. You understand? Let's continue on. I mean, this is all over. First Timothy 2 and 5, for there is one God. You understand? Hear that good. One God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Jesus Christ, not the deity. You understand? Not whatever it is that you try and add there. Here's the mediator, the go in between. There is a distinct separation here. Going to continue on. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. All y'all know this. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is man. And the head of Christ is Christ? No, is God. That's the head of Christ. Why? Because he's not who you dis distinguished as Yahweh. You understand? He's not Yahweh, the father. He stands alone. And you can't put that there. The problem is, once again, everybody gets jammed. Oh, excuse me. I need a water. Everybody gets jammed up on what? Five on that minutes word, left. God. Left. Why? They get jammed up on that word because of what Christianity has done. Christianity has done poor scholarship. And then rather than going into the actual culture of the people, they decided to read this book through Western eyes. We're not pagans here. Give me one second. I'm going to sip this water. Now, back to the scripts. So, 
I'm going to set this up for later, but this is Hebrews 2 and 16. For verily he took not the nature of angels. What's that word angel in Hebrew? Alahayim, Elohim. He didn't take that nature, but took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to himself, no, to God, to make a reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Pay attention to that. Everybody just pay attention and remember this scripture for later. We won't bring that up later. John 5 and 19. Then answered Jesus, and I hate saying Jesus. I'm going to say Yahweh Shah from now on. Salakia. Then answered Yahweh Shah and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also the son likewise. So we're still seeing a clear separation. Matter of fact, how did Christ teach us how to pray? Hmm. It's me, Jesus, who are in heaven. Nah, he said, our father who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You understand why? Making a clear distinction from what we see here. Let's continue on. Are there more? Of course there's more. Matthews 19 and 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. This is a joke, right? There is, there, there is none good but one. That is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. John 10 and 36. Say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous. Because I said, I am the son of God. He said, he's the son of God. Y'all trying to make them the same person. He answers to him, gets his orders from him, said he was sent by him, said that this is who's his head. But you wanted to make them one. It don't work like that. So this is Luke 22 and 69. Hereafter shall the son of man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Hmm. Let's bring that up later. Let's, let's just remember that when Christ returns to the fourth dimension, when he returns to the realm that the Most High is in, the Father's there too. They don't merge into one being. You understand? How are two going to occupy the same throne? We'll let that breathe. We'll let that breathe and we'll come back to it. You understand? First John 4 and 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be a savior of the world. The father sent him. I'm not saying he sent himself. You understand? Why is he submitting to his authority if he's himself? That don't make no sense. Once again, y'all try to turn the greatest man on the faith into a schizophrenic, which don't make no damn sense. I mean, I think I pretty much cleared my position. You understand? I yield the rest of my time. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, first round for both brothers. I love if you can reset the time to 10 minutes. Beautiful. Uh, now we're moving into round two for both brothers. They got, got some large bills and beautiful claims. Dr. Stacy Mobley is on you. Round two. In this round, you have the ability to rebuttal and or further uh, push your feet in the concrete in terms of your position as well. So you can utilize these 10 minutes. Um, to rebuttal and push your position a little further in the ground. Uh, Halab will interject at five minutes and one minute. Halab will interject at five minutes and one minute. This is the Versus platform of uh, simul streaming on the YouTube platform. So you guys have the ability to visually see it if you click the link at the top on the Clubhouse platform. Just letting you know. Other than that, it's round two, Dr. Stacy Mobley. Remember to unmute. And uh, once you start speaking, um, the floor is yours. This time will start. I appreciate that. And I appreciate his effort, though it was vain. Let's get back into some of the things that he said. Some of the things I had already anticipated. I knew because of their teaching that 
he was going to try to rewrite Scripture. And lo and behold, that's the very thing he did in John chapter 1. You see, the force of John 1 is so powerful. The only way around it is to try to rewrite Scripture. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was power. And the Word, the word was with power, and the Word was power. That's nonsense. That's lacking biblical scholarship. There's not a, a reputable translation anywhere that would translate the verses that way. Why he would do that and why they do that is just in, uh, incredible to me. They, they do it to get around the force of, the, of what the passage is plainly teaching, that the word is God. Now, you students of the Bible, you go look up a reputable translation, and see if anybody, anywhere, translates John 1 as they try to interpret and rewrite Scripture. It's silliness gone to seed. Now, he gave all his time in quoting John 8, 40, John 14, 28, okay, John 20, 1 Corinthians 15, Christ is no schizophrenic. 1 Timothy 5, 1 Corinthians 11, John 5, 19, Matthew 19, 17, that I'll deal with in a minute. And he didn't address the points that I was making that Christ, Jesus, is of the same divine essence. I did not say they were the same person. I said they were of the same divine essence, and they have specific roles. Of course, that's his father. That doesn't mean he's not deity. Are you listening? Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? All these, all these scriptures that he quoted can be answered very easily just like this. And let me explain the explanation. Because he, he thought he was doing something when he just started quoting all these verses as if somehow that does away with the divine nature and essence of Christ. All it shows is that they're in, they have specific roles. Let me read John 14, 28, and this capsules everything he said in all those verses. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I am going to my Father, for my Father is greater than I. As if somehow that does away with Jesus being divine. John 1 settles it. But let me respond to this, this scripture and all those he quoted. While here on earth, Jesus took on a subordinate role, position to the Father. Anything said about him, such as his Father was greater than he, he came not to do his own will, but the will of the Father. He proceeded from the Father, and not the Father from him. His Father knew some things he did not, etc., are all to be understood as referring to his incarnate state, in which he voluntarily accepted a position of subordination, and not to his eternal state. It has nothing whatsoever to do with his divine essence or nature. This is the very thing Philippians chapter 2 and verses 5 through 8 teaches us. Let me go over there and read that, and I wish I had time to do a exegesis on this passage of scripture because these time slots are so short <laughs> it doesn't give us a, a whole lot of time. But listen to this. Everything he was describing, Philippians 2, 5, it, 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 it settles it. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, that word form, the Greek word is morph, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Is that in your Bible? But made himself, you see that? He made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Five minutes that, left. That capsules, that capsules everything he said it, did, it didn't do away at all with what these verses that I gave in my first speech were teaching concerning the deity of Christ. 
concerning if, if Christ shares the divine, the same divine nature. Thomas calls him God. Isaiah did say he saw Yahweh, Jehovah. John in John chapter 12, read it, go study it. I under, I can appreciate the difficulty. I know he was going to be under uh, tremendous pressure. Read the John chapter 12 and verse 41. And see if John uh, isn't saying that Isaiah is uh, the, the glory that he saw. He's speaking of Christ in John chapter 12. It's just, it's, it's just so simple. Now, again, when you go to John chapter 1, <laughs> in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. The Word was with power. Are you serious? And the Word was God. The Word was power. That isn't the Greek word dunamis. And he admitted, he admitted it says theos. But then he goes and tries to give some other uh, definition to try to fit power in there. That won't work. And that's not being fair with the text, and that's not scholarship. And I think you, you have a serious problem. You have a serious problem there. What did he say about the imperfect tense? Well, he has a rebuttal round coming up. I want you to deal with the imperfect tense in John 1, the word was. In the beginning was, and the word was, and the word was, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I want you to deal with the imperfect tense. You guys claim to be scholars, you claim to be students of the Bible, and I'm not trying to humiliate them. But we're here to, we're here to deal with scripture. Now deal with the imperfect tense. When the word was is there in the imperfect tense, it talks, it means continuous existence. Something is ongoing or is a mode of existence that transcends time. And that's what Christ was that's what the that's what the Greek text teaches us. You can't get around around that by saying that uh, saying power. That just that won't fit. Let me get another argument in here. E L Gibor, E L Gibor, the Hebrew word E L Gibor. In Isaiah chapter nine verse six, the Bible teaches us: For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is no doubt. This no, no doubt is messianic and refers to Christ. It's interesting to note that Isaiah ten twenty one says, "A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the Mighty God." In Isaiah chapter 10, verse 20, makes it plain that the mighty God of verse 21 is Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel. But the Hebrew, which is translated mighty God in Isaiah 10, 21, is exactly the same as that which is translated mighty God in Isaiah 9, 6. It's the exact same thing. There's no distinction to be made. So if E.L. Gibber refers to Jehovah in Isaiah 10, 21, how could it be argued that the same expression, the same Hebrew word, does not refer to Jehovah in Isaiah 9, 6, when he talks about One minute left. mighty God? And if it refers to Jehovah in 9, 6, and it does, then the fact of the deity of Christ is established. So all those scriptures he quoted showing a distinction, it had nothing whatsoever to do with divine essence. I yield my time. Let me know when y'all right. ready. All right, good deal. Uh, Halab, if you can, reset the time. 10 minutes. All right, good deal. Uh, round two is on you, Captain Kaltazai. If you can, uh, you can utilize this round as a rebuttal round or to further uh, concrete your feet in the ground. So, uh, that'll be either way is perfect. Make sure you guys are, are tuned into the versus platform. Click that little green house, become a member, and nominate others. Also, we have a link above where you can click and actually see this uh, visually uh, on the Cross the Line Radio platform on YouTube. So make sure you guys uh, tune in. Other than that, the time is set. Captain Katsuzad, the floor is yours. 
round two, divinity of Jesus Christ. The time will start when you do. So since this is a rebuttal round, that, that's what we're going to do. You understand? So he, here's what happens now, right? I've, I've been taking notes. I've been paying attention to this one. Nobody in here should be able to even take anything you say valid when it comes down to translation or what you're trying to quote in Isaiah and compare based off of the fact that you just said that I dare you to go into any source and translation and see. So apparently the Strong's isn't reputable anymore, right? So we should we could throw out the whole Blue Letter Bible app and, and, and the Strong's and so on and so forth and just not use it. So Thayer's Greek lexicon, we should just we should just throw that out. All, all these are not reputable sources anymore. It's laughable. And once again, somebody who's trying to read the Bible through Greek eyes is why you'll never understand Hebrew culture. You understand? Because this is not the book of the Greeks. This is the book of the Israelites. So as a result, you have to understand our culture, which is why when you read that word, right? We're not talking about uh, 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 uh. We're talking about a power that is an authority. You understand? We, we, like, like the word could also be rulers, magistrates, so on and so forth, even in theos. But when they translate that word from Greek back into Hebrew, the context is Elohim or Alahayim, which is judge, ruler, power, or authority. Now, you said a couple of things, right? So once again, everybody throw the strongs out. Nobody's allowed to use blue letter. Go get a different lexicon. We can't use that anymore because Mobley said it. So apparently he's the authority now when that's he doesn't even know that little minute point. So now he stated something earlier where, oh, they worshiped Christ. I wonder if anybody else was ever worshiped in the Bible. You understand? I mean, Christ is king, right? I wonder if there's another king who was worshiped. This is First Chronicles 29 and 20. And David said to all the congregation, now bless the most high, your God. You know what that word God is? You understand? Like when you see the Lord, L-O-R-D in capital letters, your God, it's Yahweh Allahiah. And if it's your God or our God, it could be Allahiah Nawa. You understand? Because this is letting you know this is the most high power because that's what the word God means. You understand? Most high's name is Yahweh. It's not Jesus. It's not Yahweh Shai. These are separate entities. Let's continue on. And all the congregation blessed the most high power of their fathers and bowed down their heads and worshipped Yahweh and the king. Well, no, hold on. Is this talking? Where are we? Is this talking about Jesus? No, no, it's not. We're in First Chronicles right now. First Chronicles. 29 and 20 and they bowed down their heads and worshiped Yahweh and the king see the problem is Christians take worship and turn it into something you know magical and mysterious and ooky spooky and this is why they think you understand that there's a spook god somewhere where we serve the most high power of Abraham Isaac and Jacob you understand and you can't change that no matter how much Greek you want to use because the context always goes back to the Hebrew that's where you go to find out the actual usage and definition of the word. Let's continue on, right? So you try to bastardize a couple of scriptures. Um, matter of fact, I think one of the worst ones that you did, Jesus Christ, was um, John. And let's go to verse 12 just to show that you don't understand the context at all of what was transpiring inside of John. So you wanted to go around verse 43 and they loved and prayed. This is, this is the whole conclusion, some of the matter, right? Even when he's talking about the glory that it spake of in Esaias, right? So this is John 12, 39. Therefore, they could not believe because that Esaias said again, he hath blinded their eyes and hardeneth their heart, that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I, shall, and I should heal them. These things Esaias, when he saw his glory, spake of him. You understand? What are we talking about here? We're talking about that these people didn't want to serve the Most High. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved and praised man more than the praise of God. Jesus cried unto them and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but 
on him that sent me. If you just keep reading, you're going to get the context that they're still being separated according to context, Five even in the scriptures that you're pulling. You understand that what you're going to see is and even when he turned around and said that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Once again, that word means power. And it wasn't robbery for him to be equal with power. What does that mean? He had the power, so he used it. You understand? So he cleansed the lepers. So he raised the dead. So he stopped a storm. So he walked on water because he had the authority as you did. You understand? Like you see miracles all throughout the Old Testament. All of us, was Elijah God now? Or did he act in the spirit and power of God? You understand? When Moses split the Red Sea, when he threw, cast the serpent down, so on and so forth, did he do that of himself or did he do it of him that sent him? You understand? If it wasn't for the Nicene Council, we wouldn't even be having this argument about is Christ God or not. That's where this comes from. This comes from because you're an offshoot and a break off of, of Catholicism, which is just pagan worship, which is just about deifying Christ so that we don't have to serve the Most High anymore. But we're going to serve who sent Christ. You understand? And Yahweh Shah taught us how to do that. Once again, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So once again, there's, there's nothing that you're saying here which even adds up or is relevant whatsoever. Once again, I'm going to yield my time, and then, uh, then we're going we gonna to really get into it in round three. Good deal. Beautiful. That's uh, round one and round two for both uh, debaters. Uh, beautiful job on both ends. We're going to move into round three, which is the Q&A, the hot seat area. Um, Katazar, you're actually going to be on the hot seat first. Dr. Stacy Mobley, you will be asking the questions first. Uh, Katsaza, uh, the first rule will be you have to make sure that each answer you give, you, you're giving an answer. You cannot answer questions with questions. Um, no rhetorical questions or anything like that. Um, so make sure you're answering with answers. You cannot answer with questions. Another point would be is to make sure that you actually, uh, to any yes or no questions, or um, you must say yes or no. To any yes or no questions, you must say yes or no. You can leave it there, but then actually uh, you have the space to expound as well on your yes or no. So those are the rules. Um, the time will be at 10 minutes, and the time will be at 1 minute. The time will be at 10 minutes, and 1 minute where Halab will actually interject and give you guys that clarity. Um, so any questions or comments, anything, anybody want to add anything? Hello, Tazari, Yawasa. There will be two minutes to answer each question. I will simply say time when your time is done to answer the question. Uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley, are you uh, prepared for the first 20 minutes? Ready to roll, ready to roll. Katsas, are you good to go for the first 20 minutes? Yeah, let's hit it. All right, good deal. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, if you are in the, on the Clubhouse platform, you will see the link at the top. You can actually click that and you'll be able to see the visuals um, that's offered on YouTube for the live debate on the Cross the Line radio platform. So make sure you guys go there. To see that, if you're on a clubhouse, if you can, click that little greenhouse and become a member and, and uh, nominate others on a versus platform. Other than that, we're going to yield the floor. Y'all will stop if you can pay uh, close attention to any scholarship issues. Uh, to Zariak, I know you're kind of going to kind of be on a decorum if uh, things kind of get uh, tight. And I'll jump in there if uh, you can't utilize your mic. I'm not sure what you, if you're connected on the technical ends on YouTube. So I can jump in there as well if you can't use your mic. Other than that, uh, Halab, you got the time. Make sure you guys are yielding to the time. Of course, these areas is where it, get, it can be a little contentious back and forth. Um, so make sure you guys uh, watch the quorum. And uh, if we have to untangle you guys, we will. Other than that, the first 20 minutes, Halab, you got to sit. All right, good deal. So perfect. Um, Dr. Stacy Mobley, the time will not start until you ask your first question. Other than that, we yield.
You don't have to worry about any contention. We're going to stay with the Bible and the Bible only. This is our fight, the scriptures. Going back to John eight fifty eight, where my opponent didn't address it at all, he's going to have to deal with it in this round. And John eight fifty eight, and the discussion with his antagonists, the Jews. I want everybody to pay attention to this very, very carefully, because this is this settles it. Going back to John eight fifty eight, where Jesus said he was, I am, the self existing one. He used the same phraseology. As God in Exodus 3.14, it's the same Hebrew words. And Jesus said, I am. When he said this, we are informed in verse 59, the Jews took up stones to stone him. My question to you, my friend, is this. Was Jesus telling the truth when he said, I am? Or did the Jews have a right to stone him for what they believed was blasphemy? Can I read the scripture? Please. Okay. Yahweh shall said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Now he told the truth. Real quick, can you just quote the scripture just for the audience? That was John 8 and 58 that I just read. I just wanted to make sure that it was framed properly. You, you just said to me, he told the truth. I mean, that's what verily, verily means. It means truly, truly, I say unto you. Audience, the debate is over. My friend just admitted after all that diatribe and everything he said and all this entire discussion, this one question ended this debate. He just admitted that when Jesus said, I am, that he told the truth. And in saying he told the truth, he put him in the same exact essence as God in Exodus 3.14. The debate is over. To clarify, now, hey, he Mobley, couldn't have, Dr. Mobley. He could, let me finish, let me finish, I'll, 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 it's my time. He couldn't have said no because he would have went straight contrary to what the Bible plainly says. He would have went straight contrary to what Jesus said. And so he had to answer correctly, and when he answered correctly, he affirmed my proposition in this debate. Now, my next question, my next question, I want you to turn, if you will, please, to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm going to read verse number three. It says, the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Now, this finds its ultimate fulfillment in John the Baptist, or John the Baptist. But what I want you to pay attention to, friends, is when it says, prepare ye the way of the Lord, I'm not against scholarship. I'm not against lexicons. I'm against those who don't use them correctly. That's what I'm against. So I ask you, my friend, to open up your strongs. Open up your strongs to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 3 and tell me what that word Lord means. Tell me what that word Lord is in the Hebrew, will you please? Isaiah. Hold on.
chapter 40, verse 3. And the word Lord is Yahweh. And for the record, my argument earlier, I don't know if y'all remember, I said the Lord thy God. I made a clear distinction between Lord in all capital letters that is Yahweh and the word God, which is power or what they want to say Elohim or El, Allahia or Allah, Allahim or Allah, once again. So, you're not making a point here. What you're reading there is Yahweh when it says Lord in all capital letters. I clarified that in the last round. Thank you. All right. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the admission. I appreciate the admission. I, I, I knew he was going to struggle with this. Now, listen, friends, he just admitted that Lord in Isaiah 43 is Yahweh, is Jehovah. That, that's what it is. And when Isaiah says, prepare ye the way of the Lord, John is preparing the way for Christ, for Jesus. You see, this is, this is the problem you have when, and, and I don't mean to be unkind, but when you have a false position, you have a false position that doesn't cohere with everything the Bible is saying about the deity of Christ. But let's go on. Now, he's got some problems with Isaiah 6. So he tried to kind of I just, I just, I just got a question. Is he allowed to preach or ask questions this round? I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused here because he also asked me two separate questions and said I answered one of them, uh, which I didn't, according to how he did. So I'm just wondering, moderators... The time is getting hot. It's getting hot. No, I'm, it's I'm just, hot. I'm just wondering. Are There's we just, preaching or I just, just, just for my round? No, I need, to, no, I need okay, to know. Second, one second. Don't worry about the one second. One second. One second. Let me both of y'all, both of y'all. One second. One second. If you, if you think Wait, I'm preaching, don't, don't get started with the preaching. Just answer the question. I think you're doing a very good job in your answers. So just keep on answering the question. Right as hell. Stop talking, please. Okay. So every question gets a two-minute response, which is why there should be no rhetorical questions in this round. If you ask a question, the opponent gets two minutes to answer the question. So if there's a, you do not want to ask two questions at one time, because then the moderation will have to allow for four minutes to answer both questions, just going forward. So. Thank you for the clarification. All right, so wait, wait hold on. So I've untangled you guys. Let's ask the question again. I stopped the time. Let's ask the question again, and let's go from there. Also, I want to um, answer Katazar's question directly. Um, in terms of the, this is a Q&A, so if he would like to, you know, take two minutes to, to kind of quote-unquote preach to get to a question, then he can. Um, usually in the Q&A areas, we don't um, advise that. Because the point is to tear down the other person's argument. So if he's not utilizing the time to tear down your argument, um, usually that's, uh, you know, a lane that you don't necessarily want to take because it hurts your position. Um, so, uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley, if you can get to uh, as many as questions as you can, because it's actually going to help your position out, you know, the more questions you can actually get out. And that's what this time frame is for. Um, so I just want to make sure that I say that. That's why Katsuzawa was kind of interjecting because it was kind of being a little long-winded. Um, so we don't have a structure for that. So uh, many of questions as you ask, the better it will actually um, turn out for you. I yield. Oh, okay, my, my apologies. You know what I'm saying? You got it. Okay, I, I appreciate the clarification, but let me be clear. My, my comments are building up to my question because I want to be precise. I want to be clear. And with all due respect, I don't need to ask many questions because the questions that I have asked have already settled it. And I want to keep those questions before the audience. So that's why I don't need to ask. I'm going to ask one more question and I'm going to yield my time in this third round. So I appreciate 
again, the clarification. I think you all are doing a wonderful job, and I appreciate this platform. I really do. My final uh, question, I, I, I made mention that he was struggling with Isaiah uh, 6, and he was trying to somehow fix that up, going to uh, reading the, the other uh, passages. But he, it doesn't do away with the point that I was making, so I want to go back to Isaiah 6. In Isaiah 6, verse 5, if you will turn there with me, please. Isaiah 6 and verse number 5. Now, the Bible says here in verse number 5, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes, now please pay attention to this, in all seriousness, for my eyes, mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Now, I want to ask my opponent again to take out his strongs and go to Isaiah 6, 5, and let me know who is the Lord of hosts. Now, when he does that, what I'm saying is John applies this to Christ in John 12. So I want my opponent to go to his strongs and inform us who is the Lord of hosts in that passage. Yahweh. Thank you. In John chapter 12, he applies this to Christ. Jesus is. Yahweh. One second. One second, Dr. Stacy. If you can, John chapter 12 and what verse? And then if you can have it read. I'm sorry. Okay. Then, All right. Thank you let, me go to, let me go to it. Real quick here. <clears throat> All right. John chapter 12, um, verse number 41. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. The context in verses 37 through 40, he's speaking about Jesus. I yield my time. All uh, right, just for clarity's sake, you're saying you did yield the time? Yes, I yield my time with my questions. I feel that my questions uh, were sufficiently asked and answered. Halab, how much time did he have left? Exactly 10 minutes. Yeah. Are so you are sure you, you want to yield 10 minutes? No, he yielded. He already yielded, yo, sir. So God. I just want to make sure that I got his position clear. Um, Halab, if you can uh, reset to 20 minutes, uh, Kataza, you will actually be asking the questions of uh, this round for 20 minutes straight. Um, Dr. Stacy Mobley, you will be answering the questions. If you can, make sure you answer your questions, uh, the questions that's asked to you with answers. Uh, try not to send any rhetorical questions back. Um, if you do use scripture, uh, try to pull the scripture so, you know, it can be read and you can you can actually go to it and demonstrate it. Uh, same thing for you, Kaltaza, uh, so we can make sure that we keep that biblical integrity, that book, chapter, verse. Um, just pull the scripture and have it read right quick and then ask your question, whatever that is. Um, if there is a yes or no question asked to you, Dr. Stacy Mobley, you will have the ability to not only answer that question cleanly, yes or no, but you also can expound if need be. Um, so uh, make sure you understand that. Um, there's a two-minute maximum to any answer. Uh, you don't have to utilize the whole two minutes, but there's a two-minute maximum to uh, any answer given. Uh, other than that, uh, Halab will chime in at 10 minutes to let you guys know um, that it's 10 minutes left and chime in at the time in at one minute to let you guys know it's one minute left. Uh, other than that, um, uh, Halab, do you have anything? Uh, Yawasab, do you have anything? I'm not 
not sure if you mentioned the yes and no, that he has to say yes or no, and then we'll be able to expound to a yes or no question. That's all. Yeah, definitely. I just uh, let him know. So uh, hopefully the point is uh, clear. Kataza and uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley, uh, any questions before the round starts? Nope. I don't have any. I'm ready. All right, round three is on Captain Kataza. If you guys can, the link is posted right above. Uh, if you would like to, you can go to the YouTube platform, Cross the Line Radio, to actually get this live. And uh, it's a live visual being shown right now. So you can see a live there. Or you can also stay here on a Clubhouse platform, on a Versus platform. Uh, make sure you click the little greenhouse and nominate others uh, to come into these rooms. And uh, think as many people as you can into the room, Captain Kataza. This time will start when you start. The floor is yours. Round three on Captain Katsuza. Okay. Dr. Stacy Mobley. James 1 and 13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Is this a true statement? Yes, it is. Can God be tempted? In the context of discussion, I'm I'm I'm, ask, I'm um, answering the question and I'm furthering my explanation. Okay, let me clarify: yes or no? Can God be tempted? No. Yes or no? Is Jesus God? Yes. Yes or no? Was Jesus tempted? Yes. Y'all see the problem here? <laughs> yeah. Now. I have I have a right to respond. Yes, you do. You got it, though. Thank you, thank you. Don't 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 do that. Like, give me my two minutes. You you got give it. me my two minutes. You got it. Just thank, thank you. you. Thank you James, for answering that James, clear and concise, succinct. I'll let you finish before I get started. Go ahead. No, no, you got it. Time, the floor is yours. You have uh, two minutes. All right. Let no man say when he is it's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. This passage isn't talking about Christ. This passage is talking about the, the, the Father. This is, it's not talking about Christ. Now, he asked me if, if, if Christ could be, is Jesus God. Yes, he has the same divine essence, but that wasn't all he had. He was the God man. He had a humanity. And it was that part of him that was tempted. He drew on his divinity and, his, and, and was the, the very way he overcame temptation. So far as humanity, yes, he can be tempted. God, no, he cannot be tempted. Your problem is you don't understand the nature of Christ. He is the God-man. And that part of his nature that was human... He can be tempted, and he won't. But he drew on his divinity in order to avoid succumbing to temptation. Now, that's the answer to that question. So, just to clarify, we just read a scripture that says God cannot be tempted, correct? That's absolutely right. And Jesus is God. Yes, he is. But was he tempted? His humanity was. What? Okay, let's let's find out, right? So I just just want to see something here. Yeah, uh, I I should have said right, I should have said get yes. Get it in. I should have said yes or no. Oh, we, we gonna definitely get it in, bro. This is. Let me see here, right? So now this is Hebrews two and eighteen. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. So God can't be tempted, right? Christ is God, according to you, but he was tempted. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so now we're going we're gonna to move on. Now, we were talking about John earlier, right? But I want to, I'm going to just come over here to Colossians, all right? So before I even read Colossians, here's my question to you. Does God have a beginning or was he always in existence? God was always in existence. He doesn't have a beginning. So God... He began. He begins creation, but he has always had a uh, 
He all he has always existed. Okay, yeah. God, so you just said God begins creation. Yeah. So God has no creator. Yes, he does. God has a creator? Yes, he does. A, a minute ago, though, you just said that God begins creation, and we just said that God has no beginning. So was God always yes. in existence, or does he have a creator? He was always in existence, and he has a creator. How are you always in existence if you have a creator? If, if, if you have a creator, that means something came before you. No, he doesn't have anything that created him. So, so just, just, let's just make it clear and succinct. So God has nobody who created him. Absolutely correct. Okay, thank you. All right, so now I'm going to go to Colossians 1 and 13. All right. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. We agree we're talking about Christ right now, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Who is the image of the invisible God? We're still talking about Christ? That's correct. The firstborn of every creature. What does it mean to be born? To be born is to be begotten. It's a begetto. But this does not teach that Christ was born. H hold on. Um, the firstborn of every creature. So this is talking about the creation of Christ, is it not? No, it's not. Okay. I get to explain. I get my two minutes. Ho hold on. Let me let me let me quantify <laughs> my question. The firstborn okay. of every creature. For something to be born, it had to come from something. It was created. So if he. If this is the firstborn, what made him? All right. Am I on the clock for two minutes? Yes. Thank you. The problem is, you don't understand. Dr. Mobley, you cut out. <laughs> I, I would have ran too. Stop this time. Stop, Stop this time, time. Dr. Mobley, are you muted? <laughs> Stone him out, Debo. Uh, Allah, Dr. Allah, Dr. Mobley. You have the time stop, right? A lot. Gone. All right, good deal. Uh, so uh, maybe we got some technical issues on Dr. Stacy Mobley's side. Uh, so the time is stopped. Um, Kazizov, you can hold your position in terms of the question that you asked. Um, and hopefully we can get right back to it. Hopefully it's just uh, some technical issues. You can come right back in it. Uh, we can't see the visual on our side. but uh, How convenient of a time. Oh, he just hung up. Let's see if he calls back. Right. There is another number that called in, 719-200. Hold on. I'm trying to unmute you. Don't unmute yourself. 719-200. Can y'all hear me over there? We can hear you on Clubhouse. Okay. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, we hear you just fine, man. Just, 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 uh, just remember, God doesn't have a beginning, but Christ is the firstborn of every creature. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> this was a doctor too. I don't. I'm. I only got a high school education. Hey, where's Ariella with the SpongeBob music being <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
don't know. Maybe Yellowstop got it. Yeah, what's up? Where the music at, man? I be doing music on my own. I be putting people on hold. Hey, hold on a second. Like, dun 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 Somebody said Kenny can see past the killer one west all day. I'm reading Kenny uh Katz's uh Captain Katz's off. You can uh is it a way to reach out to him? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, maybe email him. Let me see something. Mobley, you back? Dr. Mobley, I just unmuted you again. Dr. Mobley, paging Dr. Mobley. <laughs> he, must, he, must, he must have to run the surgery or something. Um... Could could somebody else in the room call up just to make sure, just to test the phone line? Come on, come. Is the doctor in? Uh, the number is, somebody just called in, 828. Uh, eight. Hold on. Hello? It's giving y'all the spiel. I got a bunch of numbers on. Hello, hello, hello. How about now? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. It could be on our end. Do me a favor. Close out the browser, reopen it. Just refresh it. Hello? Yeah. I can hear you. You can hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. They, they can hear me. All right, so you know how to you know how to redo the browser, right? Close it out, reopen it up, and then shoot the browser again. Let's refresh it like that. What's up? No, don't close. Just just your tab, right? And then call back in. Cause you see how you see how yours is the browser. Reset that, cause that's what's connected to everybody. You can hear me fine? Everybody's saying they can hear me. We can't hear him, though. Dr. Stacy. Yeah, he got it on speaker right there. I'm coming through loud and clear. Everybody bear with us. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. I refuse to let him leave the chopping block. This is Cross the Line Radio. Please hold on you. Your call will be taken shortly. If you are the moderator, dial your PIN number now, followed by the pound key. Of Just in case we're All refreshing it. Except for you will be muted. There are other callers on the line. Doc, doc, doc. Oh, 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 hold on. Dr. Dr. Stacy. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Uh, 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 yeah, there's a reverb though. Can you hear can us? Hear, 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 hear. Why is there a reverb? You gotta unmute yourself for him to hear us. You can't be muted. Dr. Mobley. I am here. Wonderful. Clubhouse, can you hear us? Come. Clubhouse is here. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. We are back. So, so let's, just, get it, just, let's get a uh, time. Let's get a time reset. Uh, hello. Just due to the technical issues, can you at least announce uh, the time where they are? Six minutes, 41 seconds. All right, good deal. And even through the, uh, I want to appreciate the audience because even through the technical difficulties, nobody moved. Everybody stayed put. So uh, um, I'm glad Dr. Stacy is back. 
<clears throat> Kantaza, you uh, was on a space and a question. Uh, if you can, restate that question. Halab, do not start the time until Dr. Stacy starts to speak. So, um, you know, Kantaza can make sure he reserved that time due to the technical issues. Other than that, uh, I yield. Okay, so the first question, you understand, before we were interrupted that was asked was, did God always exist? He said, yes. The second one was, does God have a beginning? He said, no, God always existed. Did someone create God? No. I then went to Colossians, and we agreed this is talking about Christ. And here, it labeled Christ as the firstborn of every creature. Here we see Christ was created. How is he God then? If he is the firstborn of every creature. All right. Now, my two minutes are starting, correct? Correct. Okay. This passage of Scripture does not teach Christ being created. The Greek word, prototokos, that's the Greek word. It has to do with preeminence. We see in John 1 that we talked about earlier how Jesus is the word and he created all things. Christ is not a created being. He was God. Now, in verses, now he went to uh, Colossians 1 and, and verses number, thir uh, let's see here, uh, verses 14, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. But now he should have kept reading. Because had he kept reading, he would have did his homework on what that word firstborn means. It means preeminence. Jesus wasn't the firstborn. I think Adam beat him in that. And when you look in the Old Testament, you will see that when God declared someone the firstborn, it didn't have to do with chronology. It had to do with rank. That's what the word means, rank. Now notice what verse 16 says. For by him were all things create that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Now, if Christ created all things, the logic is he created himself. Now, are you willing to go there? You need to do your homework on that word firstborn, my friend. It has not, it has That's time to do for the question. with Christ being born, but it has everything to do with his rank and his preeminence. He is the first That's born two minutes, Land your plane, land your plane. That's two minutes. That's time. I okay. okay. So if that's the case, then Revelations 3 and 14, because you said Christ is God, correct? Absolutely. Okay, Revelations 3 and 14, and on to the angel of the church of the Ladesians, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful, true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Please break down this verse. Thank you so much for taking me here. You're we welcome. We study in Revelations 3, 14 in our Bible study, and I'm so glad you went there. Me too. Let me read it again. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, these things says to a man, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. That word beginning is the Greek word arche. And that word means he is the source of the creation of God. Not being created, but he is the source. Take out your strongs again, my friend. And I say that with all kindness. It has nothing to do with him being created but that he is the source of creation. Thank you. We Ten definitely, left we definitely agree on this, right? And now, this is why we have to talk about why you don't understand collosions, right? So, in the beginning, this is Genesis 1 and 1, God created the heavens and the earth. So now we're talking about creation. That's what all these verses are lining up for. So, when it says God talking about, It's, it's the Hebrew word is Elohim, and it's it's in the plural, and he's uh, addressing 
and talking about the Godhead, I know that because in Genesis 1, 26, he says, let us make man in our image. He's not talking about angels. Man isn't made in the image of angels. He's not talking about man. God said to make man in his image. And so when we go over again, you keep taking me back to John 1, when he says in the beginning, God, Jesus is the active agent of creation. John chapter 1, I say it again and I don't tire. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him. Without him, there was nothing made that was made. And so the answer is, he was talking, the, the, the Hebrew is Elohim, it's in the plural. You find that in Genesis 1, 26, when he says, let us make man in our image. Now, now we're getting somewhere. Colossians was explaining how everything was created. God created Christ, and then Christ and the angels created everything else, which is why you see Elohim, which is why when you read John 1 and 1, it says, and the word was with power. There's a reason why the word was with power, because he was the first born of every creation. God has no beginning and end, but clearly we see that Christ does in Colossians because he was made and then everything else came from him. Appreciate you for that. Okay, so with that being said, hold on. Let me see here. I don't think I copy and pasted that there. Bear with me one second. Because in all that, uh, in your disappearing act, I lost the scripture. Hold on. Where did I put it? Right here. Okay, so just want I just want to clarify a couple of things as well. Luke, right? Chapter 22 and 42. I'd like to thank you for answering all these questions, you know what I'm saying, very honestly, Dr. Stacy Mobley. Uh, Luke 22 and 42. I'm going to start at 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. So now here we see Christ is praying, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thine be done. Okay, here's my question. Are you telling me Christ is praying to himself to remove a cup from his own hand? Okay. Um, the answer is no. And let me explain in my two minutes. Uh, first of all, you need to give me book, chapter, and verse where angels created anything. You, you need to give me book, chapter, and verse and show me where an angel is a creator. All right? I was, I'm not going to let that pass. The next thing in, 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 in Luke 22, 42, I never said Jesus was praying to himself. I know they are distinct individuals. That has nothing to do with the fact that he possesses the same divine essence as 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 his father you're confusing the concepts and you're trying to use the people no one is saying that jesus is praying to himself when he's uh, praying to god to remove the cup he's praying to his father what does that have to do with the fact his humanity is crying out now what does that have to do with the fact that he is not divine or deity nothing at all don't confuse the concepts, my friend. Jesus is not praying to himself. He's praying to his father. That doesn't mean he isn't divine. Earlier, did you or did you not say that Christ is Yahweh? Absolutely. He's the God man. So Christ is Yahweh. So who was he praying to in the verse we just pulled in Luke? He was praying to his father. And his father's name is what according to you? His father is Yahweh in essence. Okay. So so you. so wait. That's what you're confused. I want to clarify. You just said Christ okay. is Yahweh and he's not talking to himself. 
But Christ is praying to Yahweh right now, asking himself to remove this cup from his own hand. Thank you, Dr. Stacey. No, Oakley. no, no. He's not praying to himself. He's praying to the same divine essence. That's what he's praying to. He's distinct from his father, but they possess the same divine essence. I know it's difficult, my friend. I know the concepts are difficult. And I know you're wrestling and struggling with this, but you need to get a, you need to get a hold of it and go to work on it because you're, you're not understanding deity. <laughs> okay, so just to be clear, Christ is Yahweh. Yes, he is. So, in essence, so I don't. I'm not asking. Okay, is Christ Yahweh? Yes or no? Yes. In Luke 22 and 42, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. He's Christ is asking Yahweh to remove this cup from him, according to you. Yes, he is in his essence. Is, is. So is if Christ and him are the same, is he asking himself to remove this cup from his hand? No, he's asking his father. Thank you. Uh, just 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 thank you. I appreciate that. Are, okay, so is Christ and the Father equal? Yes, yes, they're equal. Yes, they're equal. Okay, I appreciate that. So he said, he, let, "Give me, give me my." I answered yes, and let me, let me um, give. I, I want to exercise my two minutes, please. Good. Now you ask me if Christ. And his father are equal. It was a two-part question, Jesus but said, go ahead. Okay, you asked me if they're equal. Okay. Jesus said in John 10, 30, he and the father are one. Now, you, 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 and I, I, I'm trying to be as kind as I can about this. When, when, when he said that they're one, Jesus used the neuter in Greek for the word one which indicates both the Father and Jesus were one in essence, being, or nature. That's what it means. In Psalm 45, 6, and 7, the passage is quoted about God calling him God, and the Hebrew writer applies that to Jesus in Hebrews chapter 1, 8, and 9. I'm sure you're familiar with that passage. And so, yes, they are equal because the Father, God, calls his Son God. You done? Yes, I am. Two part question. Okay, where is Christ's throne? In heaven. Okay, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. All right. So this is Acts 7 and 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. So who's on the throne here? One minute left. God has a throne. So I thought you said this was Jesus' throne. Why, why is he standing? Because he's at the right hand of his father. Oh, of the father, because they're different. Because they're separate. Even when he returns back to the spirit realm. Even when he returns to heaven, you said that was his throne, but the father's on it because they're different, which is why he gets sent by the father, which is why he prays to the father, which is why he follows the orders of the father, which is why they are different. And if they were equal, he would be sitting on the throne that you said was his, but he's not. Why? For the same reason he wasn't praying to himself. I digress. Can I respond? No, you can't respond. I didn't ask I, you a question. Time, time. You can't. End of the round. <laughs> the end of the time. End of the round. Have a good time. Thank you so much. Do I get to respond to that moderator? Oh, no, that was the end of the round. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the end of the twenty minute uh, area round three for Captain Kazazak to ask questions. Uh, I want to extend the uh, invitation for both brothers to actually have an open dialogue right after this. If you guys are available, 
where you guys can just converse back and forth on things that you didn't get crystal clear for the audience. Um, are you guys available for that? Yeah, I got a little bit of time left. Let me just see what how much time is left. Okay, my show is actually over in uh, in about seven minutes. I guess round up to ten. And I promised the brother I, I'd play his music, um, do a bump it or dump it. So uh, I got about 10 minutes for that. Okay, you got 10 minutes for a back and forth? Yes. Okay, good deal. So that may be uh, in reality about five minutes then because you gotta, you guys got to have to conclude the debate. <clears throat> Two minutes conclusion. So uh, a piece. I so mean, you want to go ahead and do. Okay. I mean, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whatever's clever. You the moderator. Let me know what's up. Come on, come on. So, uh, yo, we'll, we'll, we'll stand out five Moder more Moderator? Uh-huh. Dr. Stacy. Moderator? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you give me your information and number and name? I can give you a call because I would like to set some up, some future debates up, if that's okay. Yeah, de definitely. I'm a, um, available for that. You can... uh. Communicate with Katiza and uh, we'll get everything set up from here on out. Um, you've been a good sport, so I appreciate that, Dr. Stacy Mobley. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll open up five more minutes. It's uh, it's actually perfect timing. It's 11.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we'll do five more minutes, just an open discussion. And from there, we'll go ahead and conclude on both ends. So uh, the floor is you guys. Guys, can you have an open bill with each other? I, I, for I'm not minutes? understanding what the open discussion is. I, I'm what? What is that? What are we talking about? Gotcha. It's just simply if you guys wanted to further your points, like you said, if you wanted you you wanted to kind of uh, conclude there at the end of round three, but it's the it was the end of round three. So now round three is over. If you have something to say in terms of your position, or you have an additional question for Kazuzai, you can ask it. Or if he has a question for you, he okay, can ask well, it. I I just got one thing I would like to say, and, and if he want to go in, he can. That's that's fine. But I wanted to have a chance to respond to his throne position. No, you, yeah, it's free. You you can just go ahead and talk. It's open. We're just gonna yield and let you guys okay. talk for five minutes. He all right. He he asked about he asked about the throne, and um, asked who was on the throne. Well, turn over to Revelation chapter 4 and you'll see who's on the throne. In Revelation 4, after this I looked and behold, the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here, then I will show these things which must be happy hereafter. And immediately I was in spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one, and one and one sat on the throne. Well, let's see who it was. Let's see who's on. Let's see who is on this throne. We drop down to verse eight, and you can read the, the other passages at your leisure. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, "Holy, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come." And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. That's Christ, my friend, on his throne. You sure about that? Yeah, you, you go read it. It's in your Bible. Uh, you read it. You read it, too. It's in your Bible. Let so, me hear how so, I read from you. So for the record, so Christ was not at the right hand of the Father. I just, I just want to be clarified. I just want to just clarify for me, please. I never said he wasn't at the right. I said he, he has a throne, and he was sitting on that throne in Revelation 4. Read it, my friend. Okay. Read your Bible. You have the throne of the Most High, and he's seated at the right hand. And when I asked you if they were equal, you said, yes, they're equal. Do you know what it means to be at somebody's right hand? It means that you're second in command. So they cannot be equal then because the father sends him. He don't send the father because he does the will of the father. But you turned around and are now saying what he's doing the will of himself then because I asked you, is Christ Yahweh? It wasn't you. I'm using your word. You said yes. Read, Re 
I'm, oh, let me Free finish. revelation. Let me hold. Let, 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 let me finish. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to paint. I'm just trying to paint. I'm just is. trying to paint a picture here. Just trying to paint a picture based off of the things that you said that you talked about, which is why I brought up when he was praying. Is he praying to himself? No. Is he Yahweh? Yes. Is he praying to himself? No. Y'all don't see this is this is this is crazy. I feel I feel like I need medicine after trying to understand that. You probably need some. I'm sure with <laughs> I, I, what has happened tonight. I hear you. But I read Revelation chapter four, and you'll see who the throne, who's on the throne. And I'm I'm not trying to be unkind. I I, I mean I I haven't enjoyed this discussion, but read Revelation four and tell me who's on the throne. I I, I enjoyed it too. We could, we could close out. I'm done here. All right, good deal. Let's go ahead and conclude. Oh. We'll conclude. So, can, can, we we can, set up, Dr. can we set up our next debate while while we're at it? Can we set up our next debate? Yes. Yeah, well, here. let's conclude this one first. Let's yeah, conclude how about, this how one about first. we end this one and then, like always, Doctor Mobley, what you can do is you can email or call me, and then we could negotiate at a later time. Because I did tell you I have to close my show out. Okay, I I, I respect that. Thank you. Yeah, so no problem. Um, if we can, Dr. Stacy Mobley, if you can take your two minutes to conclude the debate, just simply uh, we let the people know who you are as well as tell your school of thought. And um, let us know what you demonstrated tonight within two minutes. Just let us know um, your position that you cleanly demonstrated to the audience. Okay. Uh, two minutes. I'll do this as hurriedly as I can. I appreciate, first of all, um, the captain and his willingness to discuss it. I mean that in all sincerity. And I thank the moderators. You all have an incredible and wonderful platform. I wouldn't mind coming on and debating anyone on your platform is why I reached out to you and wanted your information. So far as uh, the debate uh, is concerned, um, I clearly proved my proposition and I um, I showed his proposition to be false. Anybody who was listening and had an honest heart uh, could see that. I know there are a lot of biases in the chat, and uh, uh, I know there are those who want to simply hold on to what they believe. But you have to be an independent thinker. You have to be a student of the Bible. And uh, as the Bible tells us, we have to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. I don't need to itemize everything that I said or go down the list. It was clearly proven and shown that Jesus Christ is indeed God in that he possesses the same divine nature as the Father as well as the Holy Spirit. My name is Stacy Mobley. I can be contacted at uh, churchofchristcoloradosprings.org. You can go to our website and uh, my information is on there. I'm a, my number is 719 Three five four 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 seven five. Feel free to contact me. We can discuss these things in private. I'd love to hear from you. Once again, thank you for this opportunity. Appreciate you as well, Dr. Stacy Mobley. Uh, we'll forward over uh, the two minutes for Captain Cotes uh, to uh, just simply uh, let the people know who you are, your school of thought as well as let the people know that what you demonstrated uh, tonight uh, cleanly. Two minutes. Floor is yours. Okay, no sweat. Uh, I'm Captain Kadazar, the Israelite School of Universal and Practical Knowledge, and uh, make sure you follow myself, Captain Zarya, the moderators, you understand, for more carnage like this against all of Christendom and, and whatever other false philosophy is out there. And I believe that we showed without a shadow of a doubt the bipolar disorder of Christianity. Because when you run this back, in his opening statement, he says, I'm going to show you that Christ is not the father, is not Yahweh. And then later on, he switched his entire stance, you understand, whenever it became convenient. So if you run back to the opening round, you'll see that it was about proving the divinity at first. And this is separate. And then the tune changed as time went on. But what I prove is that that Trinity is dead. You understand? We don't believe in polytheism. We believe in one God. You understand? Yahweh, Lahaya, Nawa, Yahweh, Kai. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Jesus Christ and the Most High are two separate entities. And I, that was proved without a shadow of a doubt. Christ is not the Most High. He is the Son of the Most High. And he does the will of his Father perfectly. 
You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you guys as well. Everybody that came into the um, clubhouse uh, space, if you guys take the opportunity to click on some of these brothers' profiles, follow them on the stage, especially Captain Contaza, who did uh, beautifully today. I know Dr. Stacy Mobley gave his information out. You have the space to check him out as well. As well as Captain Tazariak, uh, if you click on um, uh, any of our profiles, you'll look down the bottom, you'll see the clubs. Um, that's uh, Everybody's connected to the God First Gang versus Home of the Truth, Sons of Thunder, Sakari Decker House, House of Rum, etc. Um, that you guys can stay locked into. Click that little greenhouse on a clubhouse. <clears throat> Nominate others, become members um, of the Versus platform so we can have these healthy dialogues about the Bible in which we all yield to. So um, that's all that I got. Does any of the uh, moderators have anything? Yes, y'all, what's up? La, la, la. Okay, so, la, it was a good debate. You know, really appreciated the decorum. Great order in it. That's all I got. Is Tazariak still here? Yeah, I'm here. So good. That's what's up. Yeah, I'm still here. What's up? <laughs> if you uh, had anything uh, to say before we are closed out. Yeah, this is the first one I ain't moderate. Oh, but the green bag mean I'm a moderator, right? So I can't say shit, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, technically, I didn't moderate at all. I was just listening. Dom, Slocky Ma, and Corey, and y'all were with the moderators. I was just up here listening. That's what you call a surgical precision slaughter. Period. By the one. Captain Kadazai of the Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. I don't know what school he's in, but whatever school he's in, I suggest everybody get in whatever school Kadazai is in. I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> whatever school that nigga learned him from, they teaching that nigga the truth. Uh, but no, that was a good debate. Um, again, the versus platform is about damn near the only platform I would recommend to do a debate outside of maybe hot or something like that, but the Versus platform is built perfectly for uh, debates. The moderation is always solid, clean, cut, no interruptions, no nothing like that. Um, I appreciate um, Mal and Corey allowing us to do it on their platform. They didn't have to, but they did. So I appreciate y'all letting Chris and uh, stream on that. Y'all see the link up there if y'all want to see the visual of it. And um, again, follow the Versus platform, follow the platforms we have, of course, on our radio, Home of the True, The Furnace. Um, I think those are the only ones that I could think of. And uh, I think that's all I got right now. Okay, our praises. We're going to shut down over here. We're going to open one on the God First Gang. Open one on the God First Gang? Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. You know, the, I ping this account into it. How how do I supposed to know? Like, it's a different account. Follow me, man. I got. Okay. You asked me to change the picture. I changed the picture. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah, you know what I mean. So now you know this. I will count and shit, man. <laughs> I don't have to take the council and shit. I will. Nah, I ain't nah. never took a nigga to council since I've been in the street. <laughs> Don't let you be the first. <laughs> no, nah, nah, don't take me to council. Don't take me to council. No, nah, I ain't gonna take you. Yo, that's what I'm, I ain't ever with it. If it was him alone, yet. None of that since I've been in the truth. So, I'm strong. I take pride in that shit, man, because I'm able to just get along with brother. But, uh, but yeah, when I saw that guy first name, man, hit me up with that one. All right, come on. We're going to close up on right, right. you guys. Uh, All right, sure. Follow the guys on stage. Follow their brother, Joel. Uh, we're going to slide right over so we can uh, be able to freely give our opinions on the debate. Of course, we don't do that on versus platform. So, Appreciate everybody that came in, uh, subscribe, record it. Uh, make sure y'all see me that information uh, in the back chat. Other than that, um, shalom, everybody. Have a good night if you can't come into the God first game room. Hello, would you be able to close up over here? Oh, y'all, what's up? Y'all, what's up? Would you be able to close over here? Con, con, I'll close it up right now. Oh, you was asking me to close it? Con, con, that was it. Y'all, what's up? You got it. Con, con. Y'all about to show me y'all shot, Make sure everybody follow the club.
Follow everybody on stage. I'm about to close it out in the next five seconds.